guys welcome back to my channel hope you guys are having a wonderful day today i have my makeup basket monday to share with you guys i also have a little bit of an update for the makeup basket monday i am going to be doing makeup baskets but they're going to start being monthly makeup baskets that way there i feel like i have more time to review the products and then you guys can see them throughout the month versus doing these weekly because i feel like weekly they can kind of get tedious i'm still going to be doing get ready with me and everything like that the only thing that'll be missing is the picking of the products each week we're just going to pick them one month at a time try everything out because I do have a ton of products that I want to get through that I've recently purchased things that I want to try out and show you guys and see how they work and everything like that and I feel like if I put them in a monthly basket then I would be more time saving and things like that versus doing a weekly basket so hopefully you guys are okay and on board with this idea let me know your thoughts your opinions on that so let's get started from the makeup basket the first thing I want to talk about is the Viseart this is the Trist Para Palette Paralette this is the Trist palette. So here's what it looks like on the inside. I really do like this palette. Do I feel like this is a necessity for anyone to go out and purchase? No, honestly, I do not. This is not one of my favorite palettes that I've ever had. I feel like there are only a few eye looks that I can create with this palette because there's not enough variety in here. I feel like there's a lot of satin shades in here. You've gotten what? one two mattes and that's the only mattes that you have in the entire palette which makes it a little bit more difficult to work with as far as creating looks for me myself because i prefer mattes if you're someone you like shimmers or you like the more satin type of shades you might love this palette this might be something that calls to you but it's something that i'm just like okay i love it but i don't think that it's something that i'm going to recommend it will i return it no because i will use this it's just something that I feel like it's like a limited amount of looks that I can create with this. This shade over here is really pretty. It looks like a brown shade, but when you actually put it onto your eyes, it's purple. I have used this palette for the entire week. All the looks that I've created for this past week have been with this, and I really do love this. I think it's nice, but like I said, I don't think it's a necessity. I feel like it's very limited to what you can create with it, so... I probably would not recommend this for you guys. If this is something that calls to you, though, I would say go try it out and see what you think of it. The next thing is Volition, the Prismatic Luminizing Shield with SPF 50. First of all, I love that it has SPF 50. That makes me super, super happy. This is a very, very thin consistency primer. It's almost like, honestly, it feels just like I'm putting SPF on. I don't feel like it's a primer, like as far as the way it feels or anything like that. It's kind of hydrating, but I wouldn't say it's overly hydrating. It gives you a little bit of a luminosity, but nothing that is dramatic. I feel like it's just the perfect blend for a primer. In my opinion, I feel like this is a really, really good primer. I feel like for me, my skin being dry, it works really well. I think this can work with normal skin. I think this can work with oily skin. I think it's a combination type of product that's going to work with lots of people. So for me, I think this is something that I totally recommend. I am so happy to have in my collection, especially considering it has the SP. SPF 50 in it because that is extremely important to me, especially now that we're all going to be venturing outside a little bit more here soon. Actually, we already started, so we're all going to be venturing outside a lot more, and I think that's important to make sure that your SPF is on game. So this is awesome. I love that. Highly recommend. The next thing that was new that I tried out was the Anastasia Glow Kit, the Sugar Glow Kit. I really do love this. I feel bad that it took me forever to actually try one of these out. I tried the Nicole Guerrero one and it was fine for me. I never was like so over the moon by it that I was like, oh my gosh, everybody go purchase it. This one I feel like is a much better for me because I feel like every shade in here works for me. I feel like every shade I can use, I can use them for my highlights. I can use them for eye looks. This is just an awesome palette. The, pa the pans themselves are really, really big. So you're not going to run out of product anytime soon. I think if you had this highlighting set, you really don't need any other highlighters, to, in, in my opinion. You can make this very, very bold, or you can bring this down and make it a more subtle highlight. I love, love, love this. It's so something else that I do recommend. I feel like it was something that was worth the wait for me to get. I just wish I would have purchased it sooner. The next thing is the NARS. This is the NARS Wanted 2 whoops cheek palette so here's what it looks like this is the more brighter bolder looks i actually really love this too i thought for sure that i was going to get this and be like there's no way i can work with that because those colors are so bold so bright that there's no way that they're going to work for my skin tone but they do i feel like this is a palette that you can work for every skin tone i feel like using a light hand you can use this with fair skin i feel like using a regular hand you can use this with more deeper skin i love 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 this i love nars products though for me i feel like nars products are something that lasts well in my my cheeks they are very good quality so highly recommend that you go check this out if you were afraid of it too because the color kind of scared you a little bit 
definitely remember that you can use a lighter hand with it. I do have it on my cheeks today. I have the eyeshadows on my on my eyes today. I was going to say on my cheeks today. So everything that I'm talking about is on my face so that right there you can see it in action. I really do love this though. I feel like it's really, really good. Highly recommend. I know I repeat my words a lot sometimes and you guys are like, wait, did you just say really like six times? I, it's just because I'm trying to really emphasize the words that I'm saying to you guys. The next thing is a beached bronzer. This is by Laura Geller. This is the Laura Geller Beached Matte Hydrating Bronzer. I actually really do like this. I'm not good with bronzers or hot or contours or anything like that. But this one I feel like I can work with. It's on my face today because the foundation that I used was not the best. So this works really well for me with my pale, when it's really pale when a foundation is. And plus it works well with other foundations that I already own. I like this because it's not, for me it's not so drying that it makes, uh, emphasizes my dry marks, or not my dry marks, but my dry skin. Or it doesn't emphasize fine lines or anything like that. I really do like this. I like the little design in the packaging too. I think that's really pretty. I love Laura Geller's products. I feel like the only problem I've ever had is with some of her big products where they fell out of the pan, but I feel like her quality on her products are very, very good. The foundation I used this week was this one right here. This is the Balm, the Even Steven Whipped Foundation. A little goes a very long way. This is a very full coverage foundation, like super full coverage. You put a little dabs of this all over your skin, you have full coverage. This, the only problem I have with it is that I picked up the shade light medium and I wish I would have picked up medium because light medium is way too light. But when you look at it, you're like, there's no way that's too light, but it really is. Once you start blending it out, see like in here, it looks like it's not going to be too light, but for some reason it makes my skin look super pale. So I think the color range is off with this. Like what you see in here is not what you get. So I feel like that's a little deceiving because when I looked online, I thought for sure light medium was going to work perfect for me, but I should have gotten medium. I don't know how many color ranges they do have in this line, but this is something that I like, but it's something I know I'm going to have to use probably towards the winter months and then it's not going to be good for me. So I think I'm just going to pass this along because I feel like this is too drying for my skin. I do have this on my face today and I don't know if you can tell it or not, but see what it does here to my chin. It starts to break apart in parts of my face that are very, very dry. So when it's very, very dry areas, it will break apart. It's not the best for dry skin. Even when I hydrate, you can make it work, but it's not going to look the best up close. It looks fine in like a picture or something like that, but up close, you're gonna notice that it's breaking apart. When you touch it, it peels up, it picks up. It's just not my favorite, so I'm going to pass that along to somebody else that can use it and get better use out of it because I, with my dry skin, we don't mix very well. The next thing is this right here. This is the Kat Von D, the 24-hour brow. I think it's called the 24-hour brow. The super, super brow, 24-hour brow. This is something that Influencer sent me, and I am in love. I do not like brow pomades typically because I don't like the Anastasia dip brow pomade. I don't like that one at all. It's too, for me, it's hard to work with and my brows always look very drawn on. I feel like I can use this and create more natural looking brows. I do have this on my brows today. I feel like my brows look more natural when I use this. I think this is going to last me a very long time. Even though I've used this a boatload, you, I still have a ton of product in here and I have been using this a lot. You guys can tell. I like the brush as well. The only thing about this brush, I feel like it, it would be better if it had like a little spoolie on the end. I'm not going to complain too much about that though because the brush itself, I feel like does a great job. So for me, this combination is absolutely amazing. I'm so happy that Influencer sent that to me just to try out for review for free. So that way there, I know now that it's really, really good. I probably would not have been interested in picking it up to be honest with you, just because I don't like pomades. The next thing is something that used to be a love of mine and I'm like, what happened? This is the It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. This mascara, for some reason, I don't know if it's because it's a newer tube and maybe it just needs to dry out a little bit, but it really makes my lashes clump together. I can't get it to look the way it does when I usually use like the deluxe size. When I use the deluxe size of this mascara, my lashes look phenomenal. With this right here, the full size, for some reason, my lashes are not looking the best. I'm having issues trying to get it to work on my lashes, so I don't know what's going on. We're going to have to work with each other a little bit here because this is my favorite mascara, one that I've recommended so many times, and I'm like, what is your deal? We are not coping well together, so I don't know what I've done or what it's done. 
the lip product I want to talk about this week besides the Fenty Gloss Bomb. The Fenty Gloss Bomb, you guys know, is a holy grail for me. I love this. It's very, very good. It's on my lips today. I feel like it's a perfect product to use for everybody and anybody. I think everybody loves that product and it's very well loved for a good reason because it's hydrating. It's not sticky. It has just enough color that get, makes your lips just look like they have a little bit of a tint to them. It's beautiful. The other thing, the Stila, this is the Stila Stay All Day Liquid Lipstick in the shade Patina. Uh, no, is that what? Perla. I don't like this that much. It's very drying. The color for me is not the best for me. I think I'm going to pass this along to my mom because I think maybe she might enjoy this lip color better than I do because on me, it makes my teeth look very yellow and I don't know if it's because it has not enough blue tone to it or what, but my teeth look very yellow. It's kind of drying on my lips. It's not my favorite and I used to think I love the Stila Stay All Days and I'm not sure why, but this one just didn't work that well for me. I don't know if it's the particular color or if I just don't love that formula anymore because now that I'm so used to using glossy type of products, I'm not loving those matte products anymore. I don't think anybody's in love with matte products anymore to be honest with you though. So anyway that is everything that I tried in this past Makeup Basket Monday and like I said I will be coming back on here here soon and showing you guys a whole month's worth of products that I'm going to be playing with. That way there it makes it a little bit more interesting and you guys can kind of tell me what you like to see each week and to get ready with me. You can pick and choose that way. Let me know if you have any thoughts or if you have any questions about the way that I'm going to be doing this or if you have any comments or concerns about the, the products I tried this past week. Let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching and until next time I'll catch you guys later. Mm -hmm.